With that, now in 2002, along with Cheryl Cole, Nadine Coyle, Sarah Harding and Nicola Roberts, Kimberly Walsh won a place in pop stars the rival band Girls Aloud, and life changed forever. They're both doing the dance. I thing. just love that Holly does <laughs> I know, that routine. I know, you know, I love you girls. Well, <laughs> after it. ten years, six platinum albums, Brit Award, Girls Aloud finally decided to call it a day uh, earlier this year, and Kimberly has now written a tell-all autobiography about her time in the band. So it's lovely to see you. Me when is too. the right time to write an autobiography? It's a good question. It's a good question. I mean, for me, it very much felt like now or never. If I was ever going to do this. It's kind of the end of an era, the end of mm. the first chapter of my life. You know, I started in the business very, very young, and I felt like I had quite a lot to say, especially to young girls that are aspiring to do this as a career and all of that. So I kind of took the plunge. And how does everyone feel who's featured in the book? Um, I have sent the book to everyone that's featured in there. I, I, you know, I wanted everybody to have read it and be, you know, comfortable with what was in there. Because you've got two very different times in your life. You've got the time when you were growing up, yeah. you've got the time with the girls, so you've got to send the book to the girls and see what they think, but also yeah. your, your family, because it's, true. You, it, it was, it's terribly personal. Mm. Your mum and dad had constant rows, rows yeah. so much that you recorded them and played them back to them on yeah. Ghetto Blaster. It, again, imagine your child doing that to you. What was their reaction? You know what, I think they did find it tough to, yeah. to, to read that part, because obviously they had their own problems going on and they had no idea that it affected us that way and it was hard for me but I think at the same time they both knew that it you know it makes you who you are it really has you know groomed me as a person and I wouldn't be the person I am without that and I feel like it's important for people to know that you know that's where I came from and there's so many other people that have been through the same thing you that'll find identify. comfort in it and you know you do come out the other side and it, it's fine and what about with the girls? Because you've been very honest mm -hmm. in the book and you've sort of said, you know, regardless of whether Girls Aloud had, had come along, you would have absolutely have ended up being friends with Cheryl yeah. and Nicola. But with the other two girls, you sort of say that actually that probably wouldn't have been the case so much. Yeah, do you know what it is? I think it's a funny one. You've got five people that are thrown together in a group and just like, you know, you two working together or, you know, people working together in an office. Sometimes you work together really well, but in terms of actually wanting to socialise with them every night and go for drinks and, you know, really connecting on a really personal level, mm. it's not going to happen with all five and that's all that I meant by that and obviously, you know, it's been picked up with the with the press, I which is, do. you know, it's the way it is, but yeah, that's all I'm saying. So did it unravel? as a band or were there moments where you thought you know we just don't want to do this anymore or a massive great bust up or just an agreement do you know what as we've always said there was never any arguments never any big bust ups i think that's the reason we survived so long to be honest because we were all very professional and you know we would all do what we could to keep this you know machine going but at the same time it's very intense to kind of live with you know, five people day in, day out, 24 hours a day, really. Mm. And it just felt, for me anyway, and this is obviously, this is my story, this is my truth, it felt that it was the right time to kind of end on a high and just, yeah, draw a line under it. And we, we had an amazing 10 years. I'm so grateful for that, but it just felt like the right time to in move on. In the early days, it's a, it seems, looking at the book here, um, it was a miracle that you ever got uh, anywhere anyway whether you got the right clothes or in the right place to perform because you say was. although Louis was supposed to be the manager he yeah. wasn't necessarily and I'll be diplomatic here hands-on I, I was gonna say I think to say he wasn't hands-on was a slight understatement yeah um, do you know what we can laugh about it now I've even spoken to him you know I've seen him at X Factor yeah. a few times and you know he can't he can't deny it but it's like we were five really young girls we had no idea about the business and it was literally like, hi, is anybody there? <laughs> and he just, he kind of just vanished off the face of the earth. And, he, and it was, he left a message on Nadine's phone to actually say that it was over. Basically, when obviously, um, you know, Cheryl got caught up in the whole um, 
you know, incident in the club way yeah. back when. From that night on, it was like, that's it, guys. Like, you're on your own. But we were on our own anyway, to be honest. And it made us grow a lot tighter as a band, especially in those early days, because we yeah. had to learn quick. I mean, we were calling the record company and saying, oh, what should we wear for this? They were probably thinking, I don't know, it's not our problem. But we didn't know any different. Well, he, I mean, Louis has sort of been reported in the press mm. recently off the back of this, sort of saying, yeah. will you wait until my autobiography? I can't wait. Comes <laughs> I actually can't. I'll be quite interested to see the other side of the story. He actually uh, said, Kimberly who? It was probably because well, he was never there. Changed, was it? <laughs> he didn't know who I was then and he doesn't know now, so <laughs> it's fine. That's so brilliant. that's those are the those chapters of your life. So what's yeah. the next one then? What will you what will you do now? I know, do you know what? It's the first time I've actually taken a minute to breathe in ten years. So I'm thinking I'm going on a book tour tomorrow, I'm going back up north to you know, where it all started for me and um, that's going to be that's going to be very nostalgic, and I think I might just take Christmas off for the first time oh, because I, I don't remember it. last year because I was doing Strictly. It was all just a bit of a blur. Um, my sister's about to have another little boy, oh, so I'm going to have a baby to look after. So I think I might just take some time out. Will it be weird watching Strictly this year? It's going to be very strange. I mean, I'm going to be supporting Pasha all the way, but I'm going to be a tiny bit jealous that yeah. it's not me up there again. And what about um, what about Justin? He's good, yeah. This is this is this is ten years it's now. It's ten years, I know. In showbiz, in that's showbiz, like seventy seem years. To find that quite hot, <laughs> quite shocking. Um, no, he's lovely. We're really, really happy, and I think you know he's. I think he's secretly quite glad I'm going to just chill out for a minute so we can spend some time together. Spend some time together. And in the book, you actually sort of hinted at watch this space when it mm. comes to children. So you, those are your groody. words. I would never normally no, say No, I know it. you'd normally steer away from that one. I do love, I do love kids, and I feel like it's definitely the next chapter in my life, oh. hopefully. And He's what amazing. about, um, you will still sing? I, will, I, I love singing. I would love to go back, maybe do the West End again, or, and go back to my musical theatre roots, because I think that's where my training came from, and I'm really comfortable up there. So, yeah, hopefully there'll be some more adventures Because people come. forget that you actually have... I know, yeah. yeah. They, they think you just walk in to pop stars and... Uh, I know, and, and, and that and was one happen. of the reasons for doing the book, because I started at the age of five, I think. I did my first TV, and I've been auditioning and working ever since. So, yeah, it's been... Uh, Quite a long so career so far. Like, yeah, an overnight success at that point no, at all, was it? Not at all. Time. Good luck with the book tour. Thank you yeah. so much. See you. Here time. you go. It's uh, Kimberly Walsh, A Whole Lot of History, and that's the book. And thank you. Lovely, Lovely to see you. To see thank you, you so much. So.